not too long ago, we picked up this BRZ for a killer deal. Now, the reason why we got such a good price on it was because we bought it with the motor blown. When we bought the car, it had some rod knock, but we were up for the challenge and we wanted to rebuild this motor. And unfortunately for us, we not only rebuilt the motor, but we also replaced the motor. So we kind of have a good understanding of how much it costs to rebuild and replace this motor. So since I have some experience rebuilding and replacing, a Subaru BRZ engine. I figured let me share with you guys how much everything costs. That way, in case you guys ever want to pick up a Subaru BRZ Scion FRS or Toyota 86 with a blown motor, you guys know exactly how much to expect to spend or if you guys blow your own motor because let's be honest, if you have one of these cars, you know the engines are pretty temperamental. So replacing an engine or rebuilding an engine isn't too far out there. So today let's discuss how much it costs to do each option, rebuilding and replacing the engine. That way uh, you guys can kind of get an idea of a realistic expectation on what to spend. I'm not gonna lie, when me and Amanda were adding this up yesterday, it definitely hurt the soul a little bit, but that's only because we had to go through both options. We had to replace and rebuild the engine. Hopefully, when you guys do it, you guys only have to do one of them. Like I said, I'll explain why we had to do both in a little bit, but let's go over how much everything costs. So when you have a Subaru with a blown engine, there's a bunch of different things you can do, right? You can part it out, you can sell it, or you can fix it. You can either rebuild or replace the engine. So if you wanna go the no hassle method, easiest thing to do is go to your local engine supplier. They'll usually have an engine for your car with like less than 50,000 miles sometimes. It's definitely gonna cost a little bit more, but it's no hassle. So it's drop and ready. All you do is take the old engine out and put the new engine in. There's no hassle about it. You are spending a little bit extra money and you're not getting a brand new engine. You never know how the engine was previously treated. So it's always a hit or miss, but that is the no hassle method. If you need your car running ASAP, that's probably the method that you wanna go. Also, if you're a beginner, that's probably the easiest thing to do. It's really easy to just get a drop and ready engine. It's pretty simple. So if you're a beginner, that's probably the method that you wanna go. There's benefits to doing both. When you rebuild an engine, you're getting a new engine. A brand new engine that has zero miles on it, no wear and tear. It's a brand new engine and you can do all the wear and tear on it. But let's say you're a beginner just starting to get into cars or something like that, or you don't want the hassle of opening up an engine or you're just scared to do it or whatever it may be. If you get a drop in ready engine, you just, drop the new one in. It's really easy, it's straightforward, and there's minimal room for error. I mean, unless you forget to fill it up with oil on the first start, there's not really much you can do wrong. If you're a beginner, there's no shame in just replacing an engine. That's what we did here. So let's go over the cost of each method. First, let's go with just replacing an engine. Now, typically, if you want an engine with less than 60,000 miles guaranteed, and a guaranteed decent or good running engine online, typically it's gonna range around $4,000. This motor produces no power. So for a full 50 horsepower, you're paying about $4,000. It is just a little bit absurd, but it's $4,000 give or take for a relatively new FRS BRZ 86 engine. They can obviously just go on Facebook. There's always people parting out these cars, but when you are going that method, you're not getting a guarantee. You're not getting a warranty on the engine. But if you do get it from somebody that's parting out their entire car, you can typically find an engine for a little bit cheaper. Cheaper. Now this engine that's in here right now, we picked up for $2,600, which is a lot cheaper than $4,000. The motor that we picked up supposedly has about 60,000 miles on it. Whoever sold it to us could obviously lie about that. That's kind of the risk that you take when you're buying an engine for cheaper. So just know when you want to drop in ready engine, it's going to cost you about $4,000, but it can cost you just a little bit cheaper if you are willing to take a risk. And that's going to range between $2,500 to $3,000. Now when you buy a drop-in ready engine, the engine isn't gonna be the only cost. While the engine's out, you may as well just do spark plugs, which is another $75. You also need to factor in oil changes, at least two, because you need to break in the engine and all that good stuff. Since the motor's out, you may as well just replace the clutch because chances are, if your motor's blown, your clutch has seen some shit. Our clutch kit was $230. The flywheel was another $125. Another important thing to replace is the water pump. It's way easier doing it outside of the car rather than inside, so that's another $110. Oil is another 40 bucks, but that is the bare minimum. There's another set of costs if you wanna just take it a step further. I definitely recommend taking a step further. That's what we did with this car. What you're also gonna to have to look into is fuel injector gaskets. You're probably gonna to wanna to change out the gaskets on the fuel injector, so that's gonna cost you, give or take, about 100 bucks for gaskets. Since the motor is already out, you may as well go ahead and just replace the oil pickup tube. Super engines tend to vibrate a lot. On the FA, the oil pickup tube is a lot better than it is on the EJs, but personally, I felt better just replacing the oil pickup tube anyway, so that's what we did. Oil pickup tube was another $95. You're gonna need a 
it's not a gasket maker for the oil pan, so that's another $25. You can also go ahead and get a full new gasket kit. A new gasket for the water pump, thermostat, head gaskets, just everything. A full gasket kit from Subaru costs $200. It's almost all the gaskets that you need for an engine refresh. Timing kit is another $300, and a thermostat you can find for about 15 bucks. So if you wanna just buy a motor off somebody that's parting out their car, it's gonna cost you roughly 3,100 bucks. But if you wanna take it a step further and replace the gaskets and replace the oil pickup tube, timing kit and all that good stuff, it's not too bad, it's only 3,900 bucks. Now that's how much it cost us to put this motor in. So this motor was replaced with a 60,000 mile motor for 3,900 bucks. Honestly, that's not too bad. Your motor has a little refresh and now your car is running again. It's not too bad of an option. Now, if you wanna take it a step further and rebuild your engine, there's a lot of benefits to that. You have, like I said, a zero mile motor. Nobody has ever driven that motor. It's basically a brand new motor and you know it's gonna last you a while if you take care of it. When you buy a used engine, it's always a risk. You don't know the owner before you. You don't know how they took care of the engine. So it could blow up on you in 10,000 miles realistically. Now, it's not always gonna happen. Hopefully in our case, it does but it is always a possibility, so just know that. If you wanna take it a step further and rebuild your engine, that kinda of gives you peace of mind. You know how you're treating your engine and you basically have a brand new engine. So let's go over the cost of how much it costs to rebuild our previous engine that's not in here, but it was in here. Now, unfortunately, our rebuilt engine only lasted us about 700 miles, but uh, you guys could definitely avoid that by avoiding the mistake that we made, which I'll share with you guys in a little bit. Let's just go over how much it cost. So I found out that a lot of people don't know this, but you can buy a brand new short block from Subaru. You can go pick it up from Subaru or you can have it delivered, but you can buy a brand new short block. Now it may range depending on what state you live in, but for us here in New Jersey, it costs us 2,200 bucks for a brand new short block. For our specific instance, we bought this car with rod knock. So the short block was kind of gone. The heads were still fine. We had the heads checked out at a machine shop and refreshed. That cost 550 bucks for both heads. The full gasket kit from Subaru with the head gaskets and all that good stuff, that cost $200. Thermostat was another 15 bucks. Like I just told you guys, clutch kit was $230 and the flywheel was 125. We didn't get fancy or anything, we just got an OEM styled clutch. I don't think there's any need for a stage two because uh, I'm pretty sure an OEM style clutch can handle all 75 horsepower this thing produces. So we're good there. Fuel injector gaskets, give or take 100 bucks. We got all that from Subaru. Oil pickup tube, 95 bucks. Gasket maker, 25 bucks. You have the whole engine open. You need to make sure you put some assembly lube. Assembly lube because you're putting everything back together for the first time and you never really want to go in dry. So <laughs> assembly lube is another 10 bucks. Now this sneaks up on you a little bit. Since you're starting a motor for the first time, you need to do an oil change right away. Like you need to start the car for five minutes, do an oil change, and then do another oil change after you break in the engine. So all said and done, give or take, you're spending about a hundred bucks on oil just right away. And then spark plug because you do not want to do spark plugs while this motor is in the car. Do the spark plugs while the motor's out of the car. It's way easier. That's another 75 bucks. So all said and done, the cost to rebuild the engine was about $4,100. Now, if you want to compare that to the cost of how much it costs to just buy an engine and give it a little refresh, that was 3,900 bucks. So the price difference isn't too crazy. 3,900 bucks for us to replace the engine and also give it a little refresh and then 4,100 bucks for rebuilding an entire engine and basically having zero miles. Now, definitely having zero miles and having a rebuilt engine is the better way to go. That's why we chose that originally. It's not too big of a difference. Now, obviously starting from zero miles and having a brand new, basically brand new engine is the better option, right? It's just a little bit extra. It is a little time consuming, but you have a brand new engine. But uh, now let's get into real quick why this engine blew. Now, when you go that method, just make sure that you don't overlook dumb little things. Now, we had two mechanics, not one, but two mechanics here watching over every single thing I did because I wanted to make sure that everything comes out right. And uh, the one thing that we forgot is to torque down the crank pulley. I'm pretty sure I mentioned it in a previous video. So we torqued absolutely everything down to spec. I wanted to make sure that this engine comes out perfect. I was also making a video for you guys. So I was showing you guys like everything as perfect as I could do it. I torqued down every single bolt, but the one bolt that I forgot to torque down was right there, the crank pulley. <laughs> Dude, I forgot to torque down the crank pulley. So when the engine was on the engine stand, I just zapped it in with the impact and then we threw the engine in and I forgot to torque it down to spec. Please guys, do not make the same mistake. Don't forget to torque it down to spec because it causes literally just everything to take a poop on itself. The crank bounced around. It caused the timing chain to fall off or the tensioner to 
fall off or something like that, but just basically the whole motor took a poop. Just don't forget to do those little things when you rebuild an engine. That's the one thing we forgot to do. So because of that, we decided let's just screw everything. We just replaced the engine on the BRZ. So now we have a 60,000 mile motor in here, but now she is running better than ever. And uh, it's just a blast to drive, honestly. I figured because I experienced it, I can kind of share my experience with you guys and you guys can take my experience and apply it to yourselves and just decide which route you want to go. Do you want to rebuild an engine or do you want to just not have any hassles and just replace an engine? It's all up to you. I hope this video just helped you guys figure out what you guys want to do. I always try to share my mistakes with you guys because I don't want you guys to make the same mistakes. So if I have to live through the mistakes, that's all right because I'm living through my mistakes. By sharing my mistakes with you guys, I can help you guys avoid the same dumb mistakes that I made. So if any of you decide to rebuild your engine, just make sure that you don't overlook little things like that because I'm telling you guys, it's always the little things that end up biting you in the ass. I wanted to make this video real quick because once we pick up the new BRZ, we are gonna be completely consumed with that. There's gonna be no time for this. So I wanted to get this out there real quick before we get the new BRZ. That is gonna be it for today. I hope this video helps somebody out and I will catch you guys in the next video when we are picking up the new BRZ. I'll see you guys then, peace out.